hope uh, all of you enjoyed the day one of the session and you learnt a lot in between. Uh, the day one of the session began with uh, my presentation on understanding disaster and its psychological impact in which we discussed uh, the type of disaster and components of the disaster and what kind of mental health conditions were existent even before the disaster. And then we moved on to the uh, specific mental health conditions which have been, been reported in the pandemic time, both in the general population as well as people who were affected due to COVID. And then we discussed a couple of case scenarios, how people present and what kind of uh, clinical features we see when people report to these things. In second session, we had uh, Sudeep who spoke about uh, signs and symptoms of common mental health conditions. He described in detail depression, signs and symptoms, anxiety, signs and symptoms, and also simultaneously he gave screening tools Screening tools are those set of questionnaires which has been validated across India and globe to specifically pick up those people who have the condition. For example, in depression, patient health questionnaire 9 and in anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder scale 7. These are the questions and he moved on with the sleep and tools for the sleep, obsessive compulsive disorders and other things. In the third session, Dr. Kiran, professor from Vaidehi Medical College, he gave a detailed description on what is the meaning of risk, what do we know by risk assessment, what are the ways to assess the risk of an individual to develop psychiatric conditions, in the time of pandemic, he also gave simple software or mobile application based ways to assess the risk. For example, in the cases of suicide risk assessment, then he clubbed all the features of biological risk factors, environmental risk factor, individual risk factors in his third session. And we had a, a wonderfully moderated uh, three sessions by Professor Mohan Isaac, who is the Professor of Psychiatry from University of Western Australia, who has also been working with World Health Organization and is known across India and this part of the world for his immense contribution in mental health. With this backdrop, uh, we would like to begin uh, day two of this uh, session. Uh, now I would request uh, Professor Mohan Isaac to take over and we can move with the session. Sir, over to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Kishore. That was an excellent recap. It is always said that uh, when you have these kinds of programs, the second day should begin with a recap of what happened on the first day. On my personal behalf, I want to welcome all people. Uh, uh, the rules are the same. Please uh, participate actively. You could give your comments, observations, etc. on the chat box. Uh, like yesterday, uh, today we'll have two presentations. Each presenter uh, around the middle of their presentation will break for a five to eight minutes uh, discussion. So as the presentation goes on, if you have any concerns or comments, please note them in the chat, chat box. I know that... Uh, People who have already logged in are already quite active because I, the first come in the chat box was at 10.31. A person asked, when are we starting? Of course, we were only one or two minutes late. That's very good. That is, people are promptly uh, logged in and are expecting for us to start on time. Uh, so that was a good uh, recap. Today, we have two more presentations. One will be, see, now we have learned about what are the disaster consequences, specifically due to COVID. We know how to identify them. If you want to do a little more assessment, there are assessment tools. Uh, and especially for specific problems like uh, suicide, etc. Kiran told us about the risk assessment and prevention. Now, having seen all these things, how do you go about approaching these people? 
how do we manage them not that you you uh, are not expecting you to become experts in managing psychological problems due to covid you will be facilitators once you have known about how to identify people with anxiety depression panic etc now how do you further proceed approach and manage and then of course there are already lots of services in the community you know the, the the state is doing the government is doing there are other ngos doing so the second lecture today will be about integration of all these uh, different things in, you know how you will fit yourself into integrating all these things so that is uh, what is there for the next uh, two hours today uh, i just also wanted to remind you that uh, if people who are interested in knowing a little more about this this plan developed by the department of psychiatry and doc by dr kishore with active support of the pro vice chancellor and the vice chancellor was conceived last year you know around june july when the covid at that time we didn't know about the second phase we knew the first phase you know and we most of us in india thought oh, we are we are being lucky we didn't have a big uh, kind of a problem but at that time itself this was conceived you may have seen in the brochure this is called sambhav bharat some of you may have wondered some of you may have figured out what this is the sambhav is an acronym or a deviation for structured action plan for mental and behavioral preparedness against covid-19 disaster outbreak in india a virtual response to that so you are all participants in that the the whole program was conceived this is those of you who want to know more about the conceptualization and what was planned please go to the international journal of health and allied sciences september 2020 issue there is an article about this you know so you are all participants in this and i would now uh, welcome the first speaker for this morning is dr vinay hr who will talk about approach and management of mental health conditions with specific reference to covid and of course any disaster vinay is assistant professor of psychiatry at the department of psychiatry at the adi chinchingri institute of medical sciences uh, i have great pleasure in uh, introducing uh, vinay for a personal reason as well he is an alumnus of my own alma mater bangalore medical college he did his medicine mbbs from bangalore medical college i am also a proud alumnus of bangalore medical college not only that he is also an alumnus of another institution which is my alma mater that is nimhans where i worked for more than 30 years he had his post graduate training in psychiatry from nimhans he is co chair of the indian psychiatric society undergraduate educational committee he uh, is interested in medical education community mental health mental health education childhood psychiatric problems he is involved in numerous outreach programs for public in uh, rural areas he is actively a practicing community psychiatrist but most important of all the indian psychiatric society every year has a quiz program for medical students especially medical students who go through their uh, you know psychiatry training and this quiz program you know there are hundreds of medical colleges in india it's a kind of a, a very competitive things people initially compete at the state level they come to the uh, zonal level and the best teams from the zonal level contest at the national level now he is somebody who has produced year after year teams which have won the national psychiatry quiz program you know many people in the no north of the country may not know whether uh, there are the chinchinigiri medical college it is not in any big capital etc but from a very modest medical college he has a credit of producing outstanding medical students with interest in psychiatry so now with this introduction it is over to you vinay for your presentation yeah thank you for that kind introduction sir uh yeah so uh Uh, i thought i'll uh, recap uh, the sessions but already a uh, organizing team has made it i'll just say just few words here so first session was on understanding disaster and psychological impact identifying and screening mental health conditions and then risk assessment and prevention so uh, the logical in logical sequence the next session would be 
for the approach and management of mental conditions. So in this session, uh, let me just start with a disclaimer that uh, since this is an kind of an unprecedented uh, situation and uh, there are a lot of things, I mean, we have limitations in uh, uh, getting the evidences and also we are not sure of certain things, I mean, in terms of long-term complications and all. So there are still upcoming uh, research in this regard. So in that sense, this session may not be a kind of a comprehensive one wherein uh, uh, all mental health issues are discussed here and the approach to it is discussed here. As said earlier, Sambhav Bharat is a kind of a structured action plan wherein one of the module is to know that the how the approach and the treatment framework is. So in this regard, uh, even we are learning as well and we continue to learn from others' experiences and also from the literature evidences, right? So since the audience has uh, kind of a heterogeneous uh, uh, mixture of uh, uh, all, I mean, pharmacy, nursing, physiotherapy, and so on. So I thought uh, I'll just uh, 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 go through, take you through the session by under these headings. First one, so if you are working as a mental health facilitators, so you need to know that once you have made a kind of a assessment, uh, screening, so you need to categorize so that the approach can be different. So first I'll take you through categorizing for approach as mental health facilitators. Then when handling mental health issues, so you need to know when and where. In terms of I'm, I'm uh, restricting uh, it to COVID-19 here because of the relevance and uh, the, some of the principles apply the same in, in terms of disasters, okay? Right, so quarantine is one time period wherein uh, the person is uh, uh, kind of a, uh, isolated from the others with the risk of transmission to avoid the risk of transmission and still uh, has not developed symptoms, just got exposed to. While isolation is already kind of a confirmed or diagnosed with the disease and uh, further transmission is avoided through this process, isolation. And there are issues which can arise out of post-COVID infection, either acute or chronic. Okay, right. And mental health issues, whom and what? So we need to know uh, when children and elderly are affected, what needs to be done? Pregnant and postpartum women, people with disability, frontline personnel, and uh, in terms of what, what issues to be handled uh, as a separate uh, entities, substance abuse, suicidality, and also now, nowadays uh, it's coming for caregivers. So it can, uh, the health issues, mental health issues can range from anxiety to aggression, okay? And then finally, I'll just wind it up with simple psychological strategies. And the next session will deal with the integration of all the services. Okay. So first, how do we categorize for uh, uh, approaching as mental health facilitators? As you know, the relevance of uh, previous sessions was in both identification and the screening, wherein uh, there are tools of assessment as well. So while assessing, if you think that the uh, severity of the illness or the dysfunction caused in terms of socio-occupational is uh, severe, moderate, or mild. So based on that, this uh, three categories can be uh, devised. So I'll come to that uh, categories later. So one of the technique that uh, primary uh, physicians or even uh, healthcare workers can make use of uh, which actually is also a, both the kind of a psychotherapeutic procedure and also a kind of a screening test, I would say, okay, is called as BATH technique, okay? So BATH is a kind of an acronym for background, affect, troubles, handling, and empathic response, okay? So remember, so when you have made a, a screening assessment and also simultaneously, if you can just make, I mean, under this uh, framework, if you can make that happen, so maybe that you have a framework in hand and then you can go further, right? First of all, background. So this is where your kind of a history taking has to happen. So in terms of uh, what is on the question, one standard question that can be asked is what is going on in your life? So wherein they'll tell about the context and their uh, background in terms of family, current living arrangement, and how did they end, end up having these problems? And such details are required to cater uh, customize the uh, treatment needs, right? So, and then affect. 
so one needs to know that how do they feel about it so for example if somebody is uh, uh, actually uh, dealing with it positively so there is no need of any kind of uh, active intervention or somebody who has little bit of anxiety and uh, still is making use of his coping skills or just with and just needs a, a reassurance so in that in those cases so you need to ask how do you how do they feel about it then so you like to make them understand that what troubles are they facing so you like to uh, make them understand that what is the problem actually okay so by doing that they'll try to reflect upon themselves as to why are they uh, ended up uh, having this issues or why are they consulting or why are they seeking help for so they like to have a kind of a framework where in their mindset that yeah what troubles are i facing what troubles the most about this and then handling how are you handling it so by this you'll know that how their coping mechanism is so it's not that uh, just like we have a, a physical immunity like uh, if there is a wound on our uh, body so it will heal by itself even though we don't apply i mean for minor injuries so that's a called as immunity defense mechanism some kind of a defense mechanism similar thing psychologically people have defense mechanisms to deal with conflicts uh kind of a distress so ask about how they are handling it many a times they might be handling it better or if they have some kind of a mal adaptations then you can try to suggest a uh, advice okay so at the end so while listening to all of this so maybe uh, uh as a mental health facilitators one needs to learn about giving empathetic response so Uh, straight away it's not uh, right to become judgmental and say that why are you having this uh, it's not necessary at all to have this kind of a anxiety or uh, there is no need at all so this kind of a uh, 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 statements can can be uh, counterproductive so always develop this habit of uh, commenting that yeah that must be very difficult for you yeah i can understand your concern so such a empathetic response go a long way in actually uh, Uh, establishing a rapport and also uh, setting up some kind of a trust between uh, uh, facilitator and the individual who is affected with it okay so at times many times this bit technique in itself is uh, enough for somebody who has had uh, good coping skills okay that's where the category 1 comes here so here i'm trying to mention uh, the categorizing wherein uh, uh, the as a mental health facilitators keep this in mind cases which are mild in terms of uh, affection of their uh, daily functioning and also distress associated so which can be handled at their own level individual level so maybe just enough to empathize or empower them suggesting that or encourage them that they are doing good so that is also one of the way so that's first category okay so and then the second category wherein uh, individuals need some kind of a facilitation with some psychological aids for example it could be some uh, relaxation techniques or suggestions that how to cope with the current uh, issue handling the distress either in the quarantine isolation or post covid or giving some educative materials to dispel some myths and facts okay and also a nutritious diet or exercises so along with to cope with so wherein they might need some maybe a uh, few more times of uh, consultation or seeking help so wherein as a mental health facilitators you can do that and then that in itself might suffice okay the last category wherein because this is a kind of a structured framework wherein uh, we are trying to cater all the categories and uh, if in case if there are need for uh, mental health services by a specialist for example we discussed about lot of disorders yesterday right so in cases of severe uh, mental uh, disorders where in a specialist evaluation is needed maybe the referral has to happen okay there needs to be some kind of integration of services which will be dealt later okay at least remember that as a mental health facilitators either you will be empathizing or encouraging the individual or facilitate them with some psychological aids or referral okay right so uh, with regard to uh, mental health issues when and where so first uh, that happens uh, whenever uh, this uh, when the pandemic uh, uh, starts affect, start starts to affect the people is quarantine so you would have seen 
that many people after getting exposed to people with uh, similar i mean illnesses they get quarantined so so in there in itself starts kind of a, some some sort of a stigma so it's up to our mental health facilitators to uh, uh, explain about the rationale behind quarantining okay so many of them might think that they'll spread the uh, infection or maybe uh, one of the uh, way to uh, give them uh, information is that uh, it's a kind of a, what they say is altruism that you are uh, trying to avoid uh, i mean uh, so, so you are getting uh, you are helping them out by not spreading okay so so in that sense for others that you are doing this so that kind of a uh, uh, education needs needed and then fear of infection so once somebody has got exposed to and then he is quarantined so they have a, a fear of uh, actually being infected so you can just uh, educate them regarding as to how the infection spreads so what are the warning signs that they have to keep in mind rather than uh, even the minor issues that they face health related during this period and also uh, during quarantine it might happen in a home setting or it might happen in a hospital setting depending on that yeah obviously people will have a lot of uh, frustration or boredom associated with that so maybe they have to uh, uh, priorly uh, prepare themselves like for example to uh, keep them involved in talking to their friends family members or going back to their uh, some some of the passions like reading books and so on okay and also uh, the one of the obvious uh, uh, worry would be in terms of uh, people who have uh, 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 because of various the uh, socio economic status they might also be worried about their finances and daily supplies so if applicable if there are some government schemes so or some ngos are coming up with some help to people so that the schemes can be made known to them and also taking help of i mean integrating the services their daily supplies because once they quarantined it's for few days right so there they have apprehension that yeah whether their daily supplies are getting affected so what what is that what about it so such uh, uh, anxiety has to be addressed and in general advice for coping as to uh, many of them feel that it's only them who are getting affected or it's uh, that uh, yeah why me so this kind of uh, uh, apprehensions will be there so wherein general advice in terms of uh, carrying out with a nutritious diet adequate sleep self hygiene and then it's not that you are alone so there are uh, widespread uh, uh, affection in terms of people all the uh, kind of uh, status people uh, di- belong to different strata of life so once they know about it they feel a lot of relieved that yeah i mean it's a universal phenomenon okay right so in terms of isolation obviously when somebody gets to uh, know that yeah they are infected and uh, they start developing uh, health related anxiety whether this is something uh, serious or this is something uh, uh, detrimental so meanwhile there are also uh, uh, few vulnerable people they might also develop low mood irritability kind of emotional exhaustion insomnia etc so even people have a kind of a end of life crisis kind of a thing they go to the extreme of because Uh, being isolated also make them to uh, ruminate over the same thing over and over again so wherein they keep thinking about this aspect as well okay and there are chances that exacerbation of pre existing mental health conditions can also happen so in this regard it's um, as a mental health facilitators one needs to know that if it is just related to health related anxiety okay so maybe uh, Uh, some of the common symptoms people experience because of this covid-19 infections can be told to them and what are the warning signs wherein it indicates some serious issues like for example breathing difficulty on I mean, uh, fatigue on uh, walking even to the toilet or high fever persistent fever or persistent uh, uh, body aches or some other symptoms like diarrhea some atypical symptoms also can be there okay or Uh, some kind of a difficulty in actually uh, uh, concentrating so this kind of issues can be serve as a warning signs and then maybe they can report it to a, a concerned facilitator and then get the referral made okay and in terms of exacerbation of pre existing mental conditions like even uh, i mean there were disorders discussed depression 
psychosis so some kind of a teleconsultation services can be uh, made uh, available to them so that uh, they can uh, be monitored on what medications to be put on or if there are anything that can be done in terms of uh, other uh, health conditions as well so post covid 19 so we are uh, receiving lot of uh, complaints and rather uh, uh, apprehensions and also manifestations so both uh, acute and uh, as of now maybe a uh, chronic uh, lesser still we are uh, exploring that uh, uh, manifestations acute there can be instances of acute stress reaction wherein people can become kind of emotionally numb or uh, dazed so not responding so are they going to a kind of a crying spells withdrawal from the food so all this can happen as a part of acute stress reaction and also depressive disorders anxiety disorders like panic disorder generalized anxiety or presentation of obsessive compulsive disorder and insomnia is a one uh, common thing that keeps happening and even uh, just uh, uh, i mean uh, based on uh, recent uh, uh, visits by some of the patients wherein they just have uh, anxiety symptoms along with palpitations wherein both the components can be there in terms of physical and also psychological so wherein uh, they might need some kind of a uh, consultation wherein if for minor issues they can actually have a kind of a teleconsultation services uh, uh, used severe conditions wherein mental health facilitators need to uh, again categorize as to whether this can be handled at the individual level or if the significant distress and it is uh, causing lot of dysfunction maybe a referral or taking all the precautions for the covid-19 some kind of a referral or actual uh, in person visits can be arranged okay so it's worthwhile to also to uh, educate uh, individuals that there can be minor symptoms like uh, occasional uh, palpitations or fatigue which takes uh, some time to uh, resolve because uh, once they know that yeah the affection is lungs i mean main affection is lungs and there can be other organs also involved but main affection is lungs so once they know that you have to get while in a recovery stage it might take some time for it the actual uh, uh, function to be restored so they'll actually uh, uh, with that expectation they'll wait for okay so and give uh, examples of uh, uh, who have had similar difficulties and uh, patiently waiting for some time and then actually having the resolution of the symptoms okay in terms of chronic uh, mental issues health issues which can also a uh, uh, post traumatic stress disorder can happen as acute uh, uh, manifestation as well and also going further people can have because of the isolation quarantine or the incidents they would have faced or uh, grief uh, of having lost the family members so this all things can be uh, uh, combined here and the anxiety disorders depressive disorders can actually uh, continue to uh, uh, trouble them and there are recent evidences also in terms of neurocognitive deficits particularly even in the elderly also so wherein that keeps to be uh, tracked or monitored okay in terms of uh, uh, approach and treatment for this so yeah mental health as a mental health facilitators uh, it's uh, worthwhile to note that yeah there are some uh, medications also available wherein after uh, receiving a teleconsultation or consultation with the specialist uh, so if the medications are put on so there needs to be some kind of education as to okay this medication is for uh, depression this medication is for uh, sleep disturbances so that they don't get confused or they have a uh, trust developing in that regard okay so uh, maybe that uh, i'll just talk at this point of time before going into mental health issues uh, uh, whom and what so and receive uh, if any questions is that okay sir yes we can break for a little while if yes. there are any questions please feel free to put it in the chat box uh there is a question about uh, uh just one moment i'll tell you uh this is about how to this is not specifically related to what you're saying but can largely related to that how to deal with students stress due to online education lots and lots of students are online education 
it is not direct COVID, but the COVID related consequences. You know, they have to be all the time on these earphones and all that. So you may wish to respond to that. Yeah. Even uh, as a uh, working in a medical college that also exposes us to this issue, particular issue, wherein, uh, yeah, students said uh, we were taking uh, even, uh, I mean, one of my experience I would like to share here that, uh, yeah, we were taking uh, clinical postings even through online method and also theory classes. So it starts around, around eight o'clock and finishes only at about four or five. So the feedback they gave was that it's really a, become difficult for them to actually uh, sit before a mobile or a system all throughout this because it's a continuous I mean classes I mean I'm referring to a medical education here so students medical students so similar thing might happen with the others as well so one of the thing is that maybe uh, in terms of engaging them uh, there can be variety of things wherein sometimes they can be given an option to go through the video clips or concerned uh, materials at their leisure time and maybe which are actually a kind of a, a, a mandatory that we're in online classes can be had or live or anything so that can be engaged and also some kind of assignments can also be planned so that they can do it rather than doing at actual class so that they have some time their own time regarding that and also to tell them that yeah this is an unprecedented situation that everybody is undergoing and also uh, that yeah this is a uh, uh, way out and also you can actually brainstorm with the students we we, we didn't take this uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, way wherein yeah students have some kind of ideas as to how they can be engaged better or how uh, the classes can be dealt i mean some of the children wherein i mean i'm speaking of uh, uh, i mean above high school and graduates college going students wherein you can actually brainstorm with them and come with some uh, ideas to engage them better and also to not to burden because of the online classes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, not many questions have come, but I just want to make a personal reflection because yes. uh, Dr. Vinay talked about quarantine and the quarantine related issues, various issues. This is, of course, when people have to be quarantined because either they have contracted or they came in contact with somebody COVID positive or they themselves and more recently people who are COVID positive but asymptomatic are home quarantine etc. But what I would like to tell you is about my own experience of quarantine. This was not because COVID was suspected or anything. It so happened late last year, late last year. I happened to be overseas and uh, because of the COVID pandemic I very much wanted to come to India. Uh, when I came, of course, there was a mandatory 15 days quarantine before I could home go home. From the airport, we were taken. I mean, all those people who were, uh, you know, uh, who had come and uh, uh, alighted in Bangalore were taken in a bus to the quarantine place. There itself, the distress started, you know, because we had lost our freedom to move around. We had to walk around only and we were taken like... Uh, maybe like an under trial prisoner being taken to the jail or something. At least that is what was going through my mind. Then of course, 15 days quarantine. I have no, I should not complain about the living conditions, etc. It was in a government designated hotel. But since I was paying for myself, it was a three star, one of the large hotels in Bangalore. But the 15 days, no problem at all. Food will come. Door people, people wearing PPE, come and push the foot in front of your door, etc. But what went through my mind was, in the last 30 plus years of my life as a psychiatrist, I have signed the Mental Health Act to lock up young people because they were behaving oddly or they were, and some of them were pleading, sir, doctor, please don't put me, if you want to admit, you put me in an open ward, etc. I had to justify, no, 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 no because you are hearing voices, etc., you might have to be in this. And then for the first time, I empathize with them. When your freedom is taken away and you are locked up, even if you are living in a palace, you know, a lot, most people value freedom most importantly. Of course, all the other things which, uh, uh, you know, the people from different classes when they are quarantined, they have to think of their daily substitution, number of other things. But what I felt personally was this taking away the freedom and you feel as if you are locked up in a cell 
you know, I had no complaints. There was TV, there were newspapers, the food was coming and fairly good quality food. But you have no freedom to move out and you feel claustrophobic. Claustrophobia is feeling, you know, intense panic when you're locked up in the place. So I just wanted to add because there were not many questions. I'll just check whether there are any other questions. Uh, good morning, sir. How to deal with self-doubting in the difficult times of lockdown? This is a general question. Then one more question, I'll read it out and then you can go on. Thank you, doctor, for making us understand the concepts easily. Just wanted to know, as non-professionals, how easy or difficult it is to deal with an introvert or a person who doesn't listen at all? Both the questions to you, uh, uh, Vinay. Yeah. So with regard to the first question, sir, how to deal with self-doubting in difficult times of lockdown? So that's one of the reason I said was to keep communicating with family and friends so that uh, your own uh, kind of conclusions. I mean, we tend to jump into conclusions based on our own assumptions, interpretations. So that's a period wherein we need to be talking to others. We have had uh, individuals wherein uh, they doubted upon themselves, whether they're worth it, they've become a burden. So such things and they lost, uh, they had uh, even a, a decreased self-esteem because of it. So, but when they started communicating with others and then we got to know that, okay, they're actually faring better than many others. And also that uh, they had, uh, I mean, some of their friends or family reminded them of their positive coping skills or uh, their, I mean, their compliments regarding earlier behavior or personality. So wherein their uh, confidence boosted and uh, they went ahead well and did improve and handled it better. So that's one way out. And with regard to the second question. Uh, introverted people. Introvert people. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe, uh, I mean, I, I may not be able to give a exact answer to this, but still, yeah, it is a bit difficult. I mean, when handling with people with some uh, personality issues. So if it is, uh, uh, I mean, severe enough, wherein the person uh, has a kind of a, uh, not uh, a need of a close or intimate relationship or is too preoccupied with his own things. So there are, uh, I mean, can categorize as a disorder, but uh, I mean, depending on the level of understanding of the individual, maybe some effort can be made in terms of what is happening because of uh, his behavior. I mean, in, the, in terms of consequences and see if he has some insight into it and then he's ready to change. So that's one way of going ahead. So, okay. I think uh, we will uh, move ahead. We have had some discussion. The discussion in between the lecture was to break the monotony. I would uh, add a little bit to what uh, Vinay said. The question was about introverted who don't listen to other people. And then in bracket, uh, the questioner says egoistic people. Now, being egoistic and being introverted are not the same. Introverted people are who are a little shy, little hesitant. They are sensitive people. They are listening to you. They are willing to take everything that you say, but they don't talk very much because they are very self-conscious. Whereas egoistic people are because of their bloated egos, they don't they think they know everything. They don't want to listen to other people. But my response is that even egoistic people, when there is a pandemic, there is a crisis around they are willing to listen to people, you know. So uh, I would now request uh, Vinay to continue. At the end of the session, if there's time, we can have a couple of more questions. So Vinay, please go ahead. Sure. Sure, so now we'll come to the uh, uh, special populations who are in need of it. So uh, we'll take up uh, children. So as you know, uh, this pandemic situation already, one of the questions that was uh, put in the chat box was regarding students. Yeah, children, uh, have stayed indoors for most of the time, particularly the primary school uh, children, wherein at least some of the high school and college going, at least they had some offline classes, but uh, primary school, so they uh, remained indoors for most part of the time. So in this regard, and also uh, in terms of uh, depending on various resources available with the schools and the management, there were uh, classes, there were materials sent online. So some of the uh, schools didn't uh, actually take up particularly rural and all. So in this backdrop, 
so it is worthwhile that yeah these uh, 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 some kind of uh, measures can be taken up one is minimize exposure to pandemic related information but still they need to know depending on their level of understanding they need to know that what's going on even a simple information that yeah if you go outside there are germs which gets affected you can label and say that uh, yeah it is corona or covid so that's the reason why people are staying indoor and that that's the reason classes are suspended and it if at all if that is broken so what happens so this kind of a education has to happen with the children and uh, meanwhile while uh, staying indoors for most of the time and uh, just engaging on few of the online classes you have to figure out a routine with the family time available as well i mean many of uh, uh, reflections of people during this pandemic was that they got enough time to spend with the family and that was actually disregarded uh, whole of uh, during this uh, worldly things so so maybe uh, you have to figure out depending on your own family and uh, individuals family that uh, yeah some family time is also spent within they come together discuss some things have fun okay and also uh, the anxiety related to academics and career needs to be addressed yeah even you know, one needs to acknowledge the distress it's not straight away that no need to worry or uh, uh, there is not nothing much to worry about it so instead of that maybe yeah acknowledge the distress and then uh, ask what other people other students are doing so that they know that yeah in the in the amongst the batchmates what's happening what are they thinking about so what are alternatives they have in mind so such things will uh, go a long way in actually uh, addressing their anxiety related to it and also if in case if there are children with pre existing illnesses particularly a uh, kind of a uh, uh, developmental dis- difficulties or intellectual disabilities so make provision to seek professional help either uh, through teleconsultation uh, such services and then uh, maybe uh, some kind of a, a therapy whatever they are suggesting so that can be carried out even at home setting okay and this with regard to adolescents so mobile usage and substance abuse uh, frequently we had uh, uh, parents uh, uh, approaching us for this particular issue so as you know so even in, even before this pandemic this mobile usage or addiction was uh, kind of prevalent and now that it has become worse okay so maybe it's a uh, uh, parents and also as a mental health facilitators to educate the parents regarding the need to negotiate with the adolescents to develop some uh, 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 habits of usage ga- using gadgets in a particular time for a healthy way in a positive way now that uh, uh, many children demand uh, mobiles or gadgets because they are having online classes so even parents can't uh, disregard it right so in that sense maybe they like to start negotiating and also fix up a time wherein they are uh, using it healthily positively for the stuff okay. and uh, in terms of substance abuse maybe parents have to uh, know that yeah what are their uh, distresses or uh, if in case if there are some warning signs of substance dependence so they need to keep a watch on it and seek help in terms of elderly so they are the uh, vulnerable population because of the physical restriction they have in moving about and also the likelihood of having comorbidities and now that uh, this generation of elderly people also having a technology usage issues so because of which they face a lot of uh, uh, limitations in seeking help for their mental health issues in this regard maybe as a mental health facilitators if the issues are milder enough wherein they just require some kind of a reassurance and a health education as to okay these are the common symptoms of this illness and these are the things that can be handled even without uh, medication so such education has to happen and as far as possible defer the hospital visit for minor issues uh, wherein uh, the teleconsultation services offered by many uh, institutes even including nimans uh, so or even uh, there is a provision for uh, e sanjeevini uh, opd so those things can be made use of and as a mental health facilitators one need to know that elderly people who have dementia or developing dementia like illnesses the caregiving is important and the caregivers have to be have to be encouraged or they have to be taught how to share burden so that a single person doesn't become overburdened 
and also uh, to know about what are the common uh, symptoms and manifestations of such things because uh, the symptoms like for example uh, agitation or memory deficits or some kind of a suspiciousness can actually uh, give an impression to a caregiver that the person elderly person is doing intentionally so when they realize that it's a part of illness maybe they'll have a different attitude towards care giving for them okay and as i said teleconsultations and referral in case of severe illnesses wherein it requires in person evaluation coming to the pregnant and postpartum women again the same principles apply here because there are a lot of uh, 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 kind of content uh, uh, going around in uh, social media and also in the news that uh, uh, pregnant women are the more uh, becoming positive or there are chances of uh, passing on to the uh, babies as well so and they uh, i mean sensationalize the issues so here in the comes the importance of minimizing either watching reading or listening to the news about maybe restricting it into just to know what's happening and also there there can be myths and facts of breastfeeding so as per the available data there is uh, nothing to prove that uh, indeed it goes into the breast milk so and also uh, the benefits of breastfeeding outweigh the risks involved and uh, so in that sense the breastfeeding has to be encouraged and continued and uh, as a pregnant woman she needs to keep in contact with asha worker or the anm or the obstetrician so that because there will be lot of question in their mind as to whether uh, if in case if there is anything do i get a transport facility do i get a, a, a doctor to be seeing me or what if uh, if i have a, a pain sort of uh, so where is the nearby so all these issues can be sorted out if they keep in contact with ashas or obstetricians so that they know they can be reassured that yeah there is a provision made for me okay so and also they need to be reminded that their physical health as well as mental health is also contributing towards the development of a healthy baby okay and there is one uh, nimans perinatal mental health uh, helpline number available where in uh, people uh, who have a uh, provision to seek help can make use of it so coming to the people with the disability so this is one other vulnerable population wherein uh, uh, they can be sidelined and they start feeling that they have become worthless now that the resources are less and uh, people think that yeah already uh, people are disabled so maybe the resource allocation can be like biased so in this sense that yeah as a mental health facilitators you need to know that they need to have a continued access to both healthcare and also basic needs there are all, already uh, even the governmental and non governmental agencies working for them so just you need to coordinate with them so that their healthcare and basic needs are continued there and also in terms of their welfare provisions or emergency supports they might be anxious or uh, they have a lot of apprehensions for example continuation of their disability certification or evaluation or in case if because they are vulnerable in terms of both uh, uh, i mean respiratory illnesses Uh, they are more vulnerable to or if they have uh, uh, any complications so they need to be uh, transported because they need to have a special uh, uh, provision to transport so so in that sense some emergency support system has to be there in place and while dealing with this people so there needs to be a kind of attributes of active listening and acknowledging the distress rather than uh, straight away sidelining them so mental health issues pertaining to frontline personnel so it uh, 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 need not be only uh, uh, doctors there can be uh, nurses uh, attending faculty uh, group b employees all those people who are uh, i mean uh, even uh, te- lab technicians so in that sense uh, uh, sorry uh, there's some mistake here so so in terms of uh, they need to be taught about the principles of uh, self care because uh, there are a lot of instances of burnout happening uh, in that uh, in that uh, background so they need to know that they have to care for themselves as well while doing the duties or discharging uh, duties uh, at covid or non covid areas in the hospital okay so sleep diet 
exercises, having some fun time. So all this matters in terms of their self care. And uh, as a mental health facilitators, maybe a coordination they can do with the team leaders or supervisors so that the work is distributed accordingly or there can be a kind of a rotation policy uh, applicable so that one person or group of persons need not be affected uh, uh, to the core. Okay. And during quarantine, so there is always this issue that, yeah, as a frontline personnel, so they are looked upon as like somebody who has a potential to uh, spread uh, the infection. And uh, they'll uh, always obviously have a guilt associated wherein they think that whether I'm uh, actually a transfer, transmitted uh, infections to others uh, while working. So these issues needs to be addressed. And also uh, while working as a frontline person, they are subjected to stigma and also uh, they need to encounter this life death decisions wherein uh, supposing the resources are less and uh, the emergency wherein uh, ventilator availability or oxygen uh, support. So that needs to be made. Uh, uh, I mean, there can be instances during, particularly during the peaks, wherein some gets the preference, some doesn't get depending on uh, resource and also the severity of the illness and uh, likelihood of uh, survival. Okay. So these issues also needs to be addressed with them. With regard to substance abuse, so people with substance abuse, both alcohol or nicotine, I'm just focusing on the major ones here. So as a mental health facilitators, one need to know that they need to express empathy and uh, communicate the uh, personal risk involved in continuing with the substance abuse during this pandemic times. Okay. So here in, uh, they need not to be judgmental saying that your uh, substance abuser and your uh, uh, that's the reason why you need to, you are getting affected. So there needs to be a kind of a management of withdrawal related complications, wherein coordination can happen in terms of uh, teleconsultations and also uh, uh, what medications, what medications are for what. So that kind of a information can be shared with the uh, individuals affected. And also facilitating evaluation in case of C issues, wherein people can develop, uh, there can be, I mean, uh, uh, simple withdrawal, wherein there are minor symptoms like uh, sleep disturbances, kind of a tremulousness, craving for it, while the severe form can take in terms of uh, uh, altered consciousness or seizures or even a confusional state wherein uh, they, uh, they, they get disoriented. So in such instances, you'll have to facilitate the evaluation either through video consultation or taking them to in person to the hospital. All in that, yeah, after the consultations, the monitoring of medications needs to happen. And I'm just uh, mentioning here uh, about tobacco dependence, wherein uh, the strategy is to know about ask, advise, uh, assess, and assist and arrange for a follow-up in cases people are ready to quit, wherein uh, the, uh, they can be uh, suggested how to go about, including nicotine replacement therapy, uh, kind of a, uh, determining quit date, And in terms of uh, suicidality, so already uh, this session on uh, risk assessment, once as a mental health facilitator, you know that there is a risk involved. First of all, uh, I mean, communicate your willingness to offer help. That's the first thing. Then you'll have to be good listener and avoid dismissive statements that uh, there's no need for you to commit this way or why, are, why on earth are you doing this? So instead of that, so maybe you uh, uh, take out some, some time and listen to their difficulties and also give empathetic responses while being non-judgmental. And once kind of a contract is built with them, say, saying like, uh, so supposing that we are trying to get you the help needed. So meanwhile, please, can you uh, have a kind of contract that you will not harm yourself or you do uh, nothing adverse till that happens. Okay. And also in terms of crisis plan, involving the family members or the caregivers, wherein if the suicidal risk is more, so taking measures such as uh, taking out the access to the sharp instruments or weapons or some kind of objects wherein they can uh, inflict injury onto themselves and also be vigilant all throughout the day, night, and also uh, monitor their movements so that uh, if in case, if there is uh, any emergency or effort, 
our attempt to uh, sell farm so maybe uh, immediate uh, restriction at least physical restriction can be made so in terms of caregivers so uh, this uh, particular thing i uh, uh, thought of uh, making a mention is because nowadays uh, we are having a lot of uh, is i mean incidents of uh, doctors healthcare workers being uh, kind of uh, uh, injured or they are uh, getting affected because of the aggressive family members okay so here in comes the importance of educating health education and also uh, as a mental health facilitators we need to say that the uh, importance of minimizing in watching reading and listening to the news related to covid-19 wherein sensationalization happens because of which they think that okay hospital or a doctor or a healthcare worker is doing some harm intentionally so this kind of a miss uh, communication happens and as a, a, a mental health facilitator and also as a healthcare workers you need to communicate limitations in treatment resources etc because uh, uh, it's not that once they come to the hospital everything will be guaranteed like Uh, even with the modern medicine or beat matter for any other medicines there will always be limitations in spite of the treatment the people can succumb to the uh, illness so people can worsen so there are a lot of issues so that aspect has to be communicated to them and also it is uh, worthwhile to update the status of the affected to the caregivers and the family members so that they keep a track of it rather than making them uh, totally uh, uh, un unknowing about it so finally uh, i'm uh, i'm just coming to the simple psychological strategies that as the mental health facilitators you can suggest to the people so as to either uh, minimize the distress associated with the uh, mental health issues or to prevent or to uh, help them in addition to the medications or other therapy modalities that they receive okay so already we have discussed this aspect of handling distress in quarantine or isolation wherein uh, they can be encouraged to take up some uh, passion or hobbies which they uh, had earlier or com keep communicating with uh, friends and family members and also have some uh, fun time or family time okay whenever i mean they are out of uh, uh, the quarantine period and then relaxation techniques in terms of uh, there are simple techniques wherein breathing techniques abdominal breathing we say that can be taught so wherein uh, as a mental health facilitators you can just teach them by uh, saying that yeah assume a proper uh, position which is not uh, kind of stressful strain causing strain like for example adopting a, a sitting position or lying down with eyes open or closed uh, and then Uh, they they need to focus on the movements of the respiratory movements and uh, try to uh, i mean reduce the uh, respiratory cycles to uh, less than maybe a 8 6 4 to 8 normally we usually breathe i mean respiratory cycle is about uh, 14 to 16 or 18 maybe so wherein in that period so they need to slow breathe in slow breathe out wherein they can uh, uh, you make use of the abdominal breathing pattern and try to focus on the respiratory movement so that they do some kind of a uh, meditation as well wherein they'll get the benefit of this relaxation techniques and also help them to resolve grief as you know uh, grief is kind of a universal wherein uh, people uh, uh, have uh, depending on their coping abilities they go through uh, uh, different stages of it and uh, it's worthwhile as a mental health facilitator help them to resolve for example allowing them to ventilate their grief or their memories or their conflicts related to the deceased person so so if that can happen many of them recover well if in case if it is prolonged maybe a referral can be made okay and many people think that uh, 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 when in grief so uh, the uh, the deceased person or the person who's dead should not be discussed with so they'll all together try to avoid it so that may not uh, 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 help them actually okay in terms of breaking bad news as a mental health facilitator you need to know that there are certain principles involved in uh, uh, breaking bad news to the people uh, there is a one of the protocol uh, well known as spikes protocol so wherein it takes into con uh, consideration the setting 
the uh, understanding of the person involved and uh, looking into the background of uh, whatever has happened and what is uh, their expectation whether they really want to know about it and then allowing them to uh, uh, i mean uh, give the emotional reaction to it and then trying to uh, discuss the alternatives and way ahead and then summarizing it so that is a, a one of the protocol that can be uh, make you made use of and also problem solving so uh, many of them uh, when they are actually uh, 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 experiencing this problems they take it more of in a emotional uh, uh, mode wherein and uh, they get kind of a discourage or they go low so but when asked for example if similar problem if 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 you just take as a third person and tell it to them they might actually come up with some solutions rather than uh, getting emotionally involved so that's the importance of developing this technique of problem solving once they start looking at the situation as a problem to be solved so they try to come up with solutions if at all if uh, the problems are to be experienced so if the, there is something of that sort they will obviously have a emotional burden attached to it okay so these are the some of the psychological strategies that uh, as a mental health facilitators you can tell it to or teach it to the people okay so summarizing uh, as part of this module of approach and uh, management of uh, mental health conditions so initially we categorized giving empathetic or response or empower the individual then facilitating with psychological aid and then referral for specialist services then we discussed about when and where quarantine isolation and post covid then whom and what children pregnant women with disability frontline personal substance abuse suicidality and caregivers and lastly we discussed about simple psychological strategies to go ahead with hope uh, it has made some uh, meaningful communication to you people uh, thank you for your patient listening i end it here sir and if yeah. there are any questions yeah yeah thank you very much uh, vinay that was an exhaustive and very very lucid presentation uh, what i would do is there are some questions i'll just uh, raise them now you don't have to answer now you can reflect a little bit on that and i will call you at the end after the next presentation uh just to see that the next presenter uh has enough time and he doesn't miss on that see the questions are uh several you can think about them and come back uh you know at the end after we finish the next presentation yes. one is how to handle how should parents handle children who are very anxious about the covid they will not talk about their anxiety but they are anxious then there are you know the audience is a very bright and intelligent and uh, committed group they have asked other problems some of which you have not mentioned for example uh, during the online education and the covid uh, lockdown children have a lot of problems some of them have already got into gadget addiction gaming addiction playing all this uh, i know it myself because my grandson is already getting into that kind of an addiction uh, then children because they don't go out and play they are eating and obesity then uh, there are uh, some people have concerns about their social development because they are not playing and the childhood is being lost so some of these are general questions then there's another uh, question about any precautions to be taken for psychiatric patients when they go in for vaccination uh, so these are some of the questions you can think and i'll call you back in this time